We're making a change to Kotlin that makes inline lambdas truly first-class language constructs and makes them fully seamless to use. How? By addressing a long-standing inconsistency when it comes to using break and continue inside lambdas. Let's see what that's all about. We'll jump right into the code. Let's say we're writing a function to prepare a fruit platter. Our cupboard has a number of ingredients available to us. Right here we can see we have some apples, pears, tomatoes, bananas, and kale. Now, as you can see, not all of these ingredients are fruits, so we need to check them against a catalog of ingredients before we slice them and place them. Doing all of this is pretty simple. We can just loop over each item in our foods, and if it's not a valid fruit, then we can print an error message. And we can proceed with slicing and placing, we'll get back to that. Because we anticipate that our validation and rejection logic may become a bit more complicated in the future, let's extract a more general validate function from our condition. We first extract our isValid and if condition into a function, which we can just do with a quick refactoring. Call that validate. Because the condition might vary, we can extract it into a functional parameter and call it validator. And rather than always just printing some value, we can use a second functional parameter called onFailure that will be invoked when the validator lambda returns false. Let me also do some quick reformatting here to make things a little easier to read. Okay, with that bit of cleanup out of the way, our call site looks a bit different now. I've used Kotlin's named parameters to make things a bit more readable and just added a few line breaks. All these transformations that we just made didn't actually introduce any new behavior, so we can get to that now, because we kind of procrastinated on a bit of a problem. While we run validation for all items, we still end up slicing and placing them regardless of whether validation was okay or not. The fix for this is clear. In the onFailure lambda, we need to somehow handle our non-fruit items. Up until now, one of the things that we could have done here was to use a non-local return. We can mark the validate function as inline, which effectively makes the compiler copy its body and its lambda parameters at each call site in our code. Because our validator and onFailure lambdas are now effectively part of the function body of prepare fruit platter, we're now allowed to add a return expression to the lambda that actually returns from prepare fruit platter. If we wanted to, we could even be explicit about this by adding a label to our return, but it'll behave the same either way. This is already one of the great things about Kotlin inline functions. Lambdas passed as arguments to them can contain non-local return statements, which jump over the lambdas boundaries and exit from the enclosing function. All right, rerunning this, this is better. At least we got the vegetables off the fruit platter, but it's also not quite the behavior we want, because we want to continue the execution of the loop, something that really wasn't possible up until now. But starting with Kotlin 2.1, we can enable the experimental non-local break and continue language feature. For info on how to do that, check below. With that enabled, we can do precisely what we want. We can continue execution of the loop. Well, almost. Even with the feature enabled, we get a warning in our code. Ambiguous non-local continue. What's up with that? Well, let me throw a little puzzle your way, which might make this a little bit more clear. In this code sample, I have a bunch of lottery tickets. They're really just objects that house six random numbers each. I can iterate through them using a for loop and print them, for example. Then I might want to do some logic. For example, I might take a look at each of the numbers on a ticket. And maybe I really don't like the number 13 for whatever reason, so I want to break when I see that number. And here is where it might get hairy. If we have a quick glance at this code, it might not be super obvious what loop the break refers to here. Now, sure, as veteran Kotlin developers, we might surmise that break only works with four, not with for each. And in fact, moving our cursor onto the break statement even highlights the associated loop. But I hope you'd agree that this is a scenario where you'd generally be better off being explicit. The same as if we used some of the loop-like functions that exist in Kotlin, for example, repeat. That's precisely why you'll get a warning and why you'll get asked to add a label to the for loop and the associated break. In this case, we could even give it a nicer name, such as ticket loop. Now that is clearer. 
And this is also the reason why we see the same warning in our original validate function that we extracted just a bit ago. The Kotlin compiler doesn't know whether the onFailure lambda of the validate function behaves in a loop-like fashion, like you have with for each or repeat, and whether its name might throw code readers for a loop. After all, nobody likes surprises in their code. So we could just add a label to the continue and the loop, or we could go a step further and actually communicate to the compiler that the onFailure lambda does not behave like a loop. That's right, Kotlin actually has a way of expressing that, using contracts. So let's write a contract for the validate function. IntelliJ's AI integrations can actually help us write this. I can ask for a Kotlin contract specifying the invocations of validator and on failure. I'll need to add some imports here, and contracts are also experimental, uh, so we'll need to opt into using them. But by having added this contract declaration, we specify that the validator lambda is called exactly once and in place, and that the on failure lambda is executed at most once, also in place. As far as the Kotlin compiler is concerned, that's a proper assurance that the behavior of on failure is not loop-like, and not likely to cause confusion when you use break or continue inside the lambda body. And just like that, the warning vanishes. I don't know about you, but I think being able to express that this is really neat. Now I do want to be clear that, of course, we could have restructured this code example to look different without the need for a non-local continue, and you can successfully argue with me that some chained list operations are often a better fit than a non-local break or continue. For instance, if we go back to the lottery ticket example, we could switch out the for each with a second for loop, or better yet, use the any function on the numbers list to determine whether a ticket is unlucky. And now we have a version of the code that requires neither a non-local break nor a label on the loop. But regardless, this newly added consistency, the fact that break and continue aren't fundamentally different from, say, a non-local return, just gives you additional flexibility. It makes you more flexible in how you express yourself when you work with the combination of inline functions, lambdas, and loops. For example, when you work with scope functions like let, apply, run, also, and with, when you work with mutexes or locks in Kotlin coroutines, or when you work with the result type to do functional error handling in Kotlin. Let's actually take a look at a few other examples that make non-local break and continue really shine. For scope functions like with, you can write code like this, where you can continue or break from within the scope function. So here we pass the letter for each iteration to a supplier object, which we would like to use as a receiver type, so that we can call functions like isValid or supplyValue without having to repeat the object name multiple times. The introduction of non-local breaking continue statements means that with is no longer an insurmountable boundary here. We can just directly influence the execution of the loop from within that body. Similarly, in Kotlin coroutines, you might find yourself using the with lock function together with a mutex, which allows you to declare a critical section that should only execute while the lock is held. If you're doing that inside of a loop, like we are here, well, then you could use non local break and continue and exit the lambda pass to with lock early and just get on with the next iteration or break out entirely. And why is that possible without a label? Well, because, just like we did earlier, withLock is an inline function that specifies in its contract that the action lambda is invoked in place and exactly once. And of course, when you're using continue from inside with lock, the lock is still properly released and then reacquired for the next iteration. Okay, you probably have a pretty good idea of the pattern by now. So what we're about to do with this code that's using a function to give us a result object inside of an infinite loop uh, shouldn't really come as much of a surprise at this point. Much like the original validator example, when you have an object, which is of type result, then we can declare an on failure or an on success lambda and use break or continue for the surrounding loop from within. In this case, after logging the exception. We could do that either directly or as part of a fold operation. I can once again just ask my tool to rewrite this by asking to replace with fold print on success. And we get the code we'd expect, once again, breaking the while loop from within the lambda. Now compare this to what the same code would have looked like without our new fancy breaking continuous superpowers. It would have involved an explicit is failure check, it would have required us to force unwrap the exception, and use get or throw just to print the result. I think it's easy to see why, for this scenario, the code we can write now is a huge improvement. 
In short, Kotlin becomes more consistent, and it does so by now experimentally supporting break and continue statements in a non-local manner. Analog to non-local return expressions. It gets you more flexibility when you're writing code where you have loops combined with inline functions that have lambda parameters. Plus, it finally makes inline lambdas real first-class language constructs. And did you know that Kotlin 2.1 comes with a bunch of other new exciting features? We've got videos for that as well, so check out the video on screen and take care. There's always more Kotlin to explore.